for seeing um, uh, the neuropathologist. Uh, we'll be um, talking with you on the call. I think your sister's on the line, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah sir. I knew who my dad was. He was a humble Detroit guy that, you know, he made it, but as soon as he was done, he moved right back here to Detroit. From 78 to 86, he was a member of the Pittsburgh Steelers. He started at corner with Mel Blunt, Jack Lambert, me and Joe Green, Elsie Greenwood, Dwight White. So, you know, he played with, you know, a bunch of Hall of Famers. They were the Steel Curtain. They would always tell me, like, man, your dad was a bulldog. He didn't care if he hit you with his head, you know, and that's that's probably one of the reasons why he had, you know, so many, you know, head injuries, and that's what he did, but that's what everybody did. That was the cool thing back then. Hit somebody as hard as you can and make them give up. I went through at least a good five, seven other ones that they took him off the field and had to go to the hospital. He would ask me like, did you hear that hit? Did you hear that hit? Did you hear them helmets crash? Now I'm up in the audience. But I could say, yeah, I heard you. 50,000 people, right? There. But I could hear that, you know, because he, I could hear it. I could hear them helmets when I saw him do it. He, that was what he lived for. He loved that game. He loved to hit. Looking back on just college, you know, my junior year is kind of where I started to notice my dad just not himself. The love of the game, I hear you, it just was gone. Like I lost that because every time I was in a game, every time I did something, I was calling him to tell him. When he would plan a trip, come out to a game, or he would come to Minnesota. That was the dad I knew, that was my dad. My senior day, which is, you know, all your family's there, he didn't come. And then I remember after the game, they wanted to tell me like, hey, you haven't been around, you've been at college. Uh, this is what we've been dealing with. Like, this is what he's been doing. This is, he hasn't been himself. And I just remember breaking down and kind of crying like, man, like, like why? He shaved his mustache off and Ryan loved his mustache. So I was like, when he grow that mustache back, I know he's okay. He never grew that mustache back. And things got progressively worse. This had to be like 2005 or six. Me and my sister just went to see him. As soon as you walk in, in the living room, there was just literally white pieces of paper typed out on a computer. And they just said like, be careful. These aren't your kids. You know, we kind of sat there and we looked at the wall and you know, it's one of those things where you're just like, I don't even know if I want to know. Your mind always go back to that ride that you knew in college. And now you're looking at this Ryan, and it's like, oh my God, how did we get to here? I mean, it took me probably weeks to kind of deal with it and, and move on. That's just tough to think about, you know, doors locked, you're in the house by yourself, kids are grown. You're divorced, you know. I don't know what was going on in his mind, uh, but I hope he did just fall asleep, you know, and that was that, and then just didn't wake up. It was painful. Even now, I, I, when I go certain places, I just think about, I can't believe he's not walking this earth anymore. Oh, God. But he's in a better place because he was hurting. It was surreal just to see how he was actually living. Every room had stuff in it. The basement had boxes everywhere. Suitcases still had tags on it that he had bought. Toys 
still in the, you know, Christmas wrappers that he never gave out. He was always a clean up on Sunday kind of a person. So when I saw the house, I just knew it, that wasn't him. Teach me how to barbecue. I've been barbecuing since I was 12. Oh man, Wait, here we go. Be shy. I'm not taping, I'm just trying to focus. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> how you feel, bro? Hmm. Numb, I guess. I don't really have a. I mean, it's good to know yeah. a lot of the stuff wasn't him. Like, it was, wasn't his fault. I wish we knew or could have helped him understand. The, the good part about it was, you know, he's not struggling anymore. You know, mentally, he's not trapped in his own body. He's not questioning if we're his kids. I just, you know, pray that God now, you know, restores him and just gives him that sense of this is everything that was you know, going on in your life and this is where you are and days at peace. Mm -hmm.